You know, that was just a fun little thing to do in that passage. It's such a fun little thing to play, more so symphonique. It's not little. It's not little. It's a very, very successful piece. Um, the Guillemot, I first played with orchestra in 1967 uh, with members of the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra, and it was really, really fun. It was at a music camp, the St. Paul Philharmonic Music Camp. Oh, it was a riot. And I was thrilled to play it. Um, a band director that actually started me on trombone, one of them named Joe Ferreira, heard me playing at that camp. And he said, you know, you're getting to be pretty good. He said, why don't you do this pizza for, piece I've heard called Morso Symphonique? And um, I said, sure. He said, I'll get the music for you. We'll do it in a couple of weeks. So I had the music for two weeks, and then I played it. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'd love to have a tape of that. <laughs> but you know, at a certain point in time, you're not overly concerned with how great it sounds. You're just having a ball. And it's important to keep part of that alive. <sighs> a lot of that alive. So today's topic really, um, is about articulation, or articulation. That's the question, and that's the discovery. Many times we're speaking of articulation, we get caught up in thinking about our tongue. Makes sense. But oftentimes we forget about its companion part, the air, and its other companion part, which is the embouchure. And as our first video, or the video last week, which was talking about the embouchure and the air relationship, that is vital for, for clarity. That is vital for articulation. It's just not tonguing. In fact, the more inefficient the vibration in the embouchure, the more a person's going to have to feel like they have to tongue. And I know um, I was taught at certain points in time to say ta or tu. And I always wondered why my legato playing felt better than my articulated playing. It's because the tongue itself was too high in my mouth. So when I said ta, I had to go high to, to make the t sound. And then ta, my embouchure would have to open up. And so there was this ta. And, of course, more movement of the jaw happens when you do that. I, I can't even hardly do it anymore. I don't know how I used to do that. Um, now, I do more of a DTH sound. Do, 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 do. With my tongue, more the flat part, just the tip. Just not the tip of the tongue. But the flatter part going, do, do, do. Against the teeth, like, do, do. Do. If my teeth are here, tongue's going do, 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 do. And that, ever since I you know, discovered that in myself, I haven't had really any jaw movement that would get in the way of anything. And it was much more unified to my legato playing. Even though with my legato playing, my articulation in terms of my tongue is much different. I'm very high in the roof of my mouth. <laughs> nowhere near my teeth. It's kind of like a, we're a la and a da, a very high da with me. As a matter of fact, the tongue is actually hardly hitting the roof of, the, roof of my mouth. It's more moving the air. So the tongue actually is an instrument that can help move the air along. And the air facilitates 
the movement of the tongue at a certain point. So, one of the things I'd like you to think about this week for our assignment is doing some articulation exercises that you do on a regular basis. Um, and do them with thinking about the air and thinking about your tongue. Is your tongue in a position that facilitates the whole efficiency of your embouchure? Sometimes you might have to lower it a bit. Uh, there are cases where people have had to raise it a bit too. And this is also where syllables come in, and it's a huge, huge topic, actually. And we'll probably have to have a companion video on this. And some of these topics that I'm bringing up realize that they're, they're for you to discover, and if you have questions, please write them in. Um, because without guidance, it can, sometimes it can be a little difficult. So, the Arben's exercise, one of them, as you know, that I love, is this one. And can you do that? Just air articulated. Put the mouth piece up, take a little breath through the nose, and just go. That time I did the chromatic one. And that's good to do the chromatic one, it's actually more incremental. So I do suggest that one as well. And try to make the air articulation on the short side. And then see if you can match that with your tongue, with your tongue not getting in the way. Boop, 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 boop. And it's a very excellent exercise for efficiency. Now, can you take that same thing and play it a little bit louder? So, as you can probably tell, the first one I used my tongue, the second one was just the air. So, those kind of things, playing, playing even some excerpts like that, um, playing some of your solos like that, can be an excellent way to develop your relationship with your air and your articulation, and of course your embouchure. It's a three is not a crowd in that way. Three is a working machine if done the right way. So with that, you might also want to look into legato double tonguing. And that is something that I do on a regular basis. And that's do 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 for some people like da ga da ga da. Some people like do do go do go do. I find that one a little more difficult. So I do do go do. And I'll take like the Arbin's double tongue exercises. And I'll do it like that. And when you heard me do the first part of Morse So Symphonique, that was all double tongued. And most people, when I do it, can't really tell whether it's double tongued or not. And that's good. Um, you don't have to be a staunch, I just single tongue everything to think that's the only way to articulate. I know many fine brass players that really have developed their double tongue to a degree where you can't tell the difference, and there's no such thing as a, I got a break between my single and double tongue anymore. The way to get rid of that is to develop a slow double tongue, and then you gradually speed it up. It's fantastic, because there's rarely anything that can tie you up in knots. Just sometimes you have to figure out the right formula. Should I go kutukutuku, or tukutukutu, and, or tutukututu? There's so many different ways to vary up that little variation but it helps even your short double-tonguing, and it makes you very well aware of your air. So try a couple of those things for this week, and I'll probably have a supplemental video on this one. All right.